Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to go through and show you my 18650 charging station. Now I'm going to be using those same charging boards from a previous video, which are the TP4056. Now you can go check that video out as well. But as for this charging station, I'm going to be building it with a whole heap of parts alongside with a couple of my Opus uh, 18650 battery charge and testers. Now, I just want to say up front that this video did turn into a bit of a fail anyway, uh, primarily because of the way that I set up the actual board, which you'll see later on in the end of the video, but I'd make sure if you're going to build something similar, make sure you watch through and I'll kind of explain what I messed up and then you'll be able to get it right. So let's jump through and go through step by step. First off, with these 18650 battery holders, they have a positive and negative wire that comes out of them. So then we have the TP4056 battery charger, and we have the positive and negative terminals which connect up to the battery charger. So what I've done here is actually glued a whole heap of them down together, and I was going to line up these chargers along and wire up the positive and negative which is where we come to my first problem when you actually push the batteries in they expand the cell holder a little bit and they don't fit in so it's actually needed some spacing between them so i would suggest doing that if you're going to do something similar um, as you can see i've just angled the boards i've created a negative uh, for the actual power coming in which connects to like a bit of a bus rail and then i have these switches which I'm gluing between the, the uh, positive rail to the actual charging point on the board where it accepts the power in. Now, one of the things that I did also incorrectly was I soldered it onto the actual board itself, uh, which meant that when there was a little bit of movement when you turn the switch on and off, uh, if you kept doing it back and forward, it actually broke the connection. So I would suggest having a... Uh, wire between them and just super glue or, or hot glue the actual switch down to the wood or whatever it is you're building that's probably a better way of doing it but as long as we have the positive that goes to the positive uh, component on the actual board and then you've got the negative where you can see I've actually wired and soldered the negative cable onto that point now, I could have used the USB port instead uh, to power it that way because uh, it is powered off that 5 volts. But, um, yeah, you just want to set it up however you need. I didn't want to use a whole heap of USB cables. Plus, I wanted to be able to control each unit by a switch. Now, making sure that when I actually soldered them down that I didn't make contact between the switch and the casing of the USB socket because that would be grounded so you didn't want to short it out but as you can see it has moves a little bit there and it snaps off so I thought that if I actually hot glued it in place it'd be all right but it wasn't um, after I was using it for a little bit so that was a bit of a mistake as well which yeah I would suggest that you just wire uh, into the actual board and then wire into the switch that way you're going to have a better connection and I just run over and test each of those connection points which you know even though I uh, did fail over time I would suggest you do that anyway if you're going to do something like that and uh, that way you make sure you've actually got a proper connection uh, across all of those rails. Then what I did was put the power supply, which is a 5 volt or a 240 to 5 volt power supply. I have the AC going into it and then the 5 volt rails connecting up to those bus bars or whatever you want to call it there, those wires. Um, so that way when powered, if I turn on each of the units via the switch, you can see they actually turn on individually, which is good if some cells want to charge, um, they might not have a big of as big of capacity or they might be partly charged so that way you can actually turn on each one on and off uh, and that way you don't have to turn off the entire unit just to pull out one cell. 
Now, as for my Opus uh, units, I'm actually going to get these 12 volt power supplies. So that's 240 to 12 volt. I'm going to take out the actual plug component itself, uh, that one there. And what I'm going to do is wire in a switch and a uh, power cable direct into the 240 side of the other transformer. So it'll actually have uh, 240 volt in. I wouldn't suggest really doing this one. Um, and I did notice there that the unit itself was faulty because there was no solder on that connection. So um, once I added the switch, you can see there it turns on and off the 240 volts and uh, then would transform that down to 12, which will go into the Opus unit. And I modified the actual uh, back end of the transformer so that it is actually to one of these 12 volt plugs, which fits into the Opus unit. So once I put all that back into the actual housing itself, I can cover it up. Uh, that way it's uh, no exposed 240 volt or even the 12 volt. And you've got the switch there, um, which will run, like I said before, onto the 240 volt side of the transformer. So that's the 5 volt rails and there's the 240 there. We would connect the positive and negative uh, up into that side as well, just wire them in parallel. Now I've done it for two of these power packs. That way I've got two Opus units um, and I did something quite similar to this one where I modified the actual uh, connections as well and got rid of the plug. So once I attached everything down, it basically looked like this. So we have the transformers that turn on those Opus units for the battery chargers. Each of those individual uh, chargers there can just be switched on and off. Um, and there's the unit itself. Now, I was actually quite happy with how it turned out, besides the fact that when you take the batteries and try and put them in, so you gotta make sure for starters, the negative goes to the right one, otherwise you'll fry the charger. So negative up the top, positive down the bottom. Now, when I try to put them in, it actually has issues there. You can kind of see it tries to push apart. And I actually did force them in at one point, which basically broke all of the holders off of the backboard, um, which wouldn't happen if there was a little bit of spacing. And at the same time, because everything moved, it then broke some of those connections for the power going into the actual charging board. So when I change this and make it uh, a little bit more spaced out, I'll do something similar, but obviously fix up the spacing between those cell holders, uh, fix up the actual switches and make sure that they're not direct soldered onto the board, which is a bit of a um, mistake that I made so quite easy to actually fix up and make uh, into something quite suitable I've got the chargers there now I've got the opus units which do the discharge tests uh, and yeah so now I've got quite a good size testing station for my 18650 cells which I'm going to do some future projects on battery cells and things like that so make sure you like subscribe and you can keep up to date with these projects. Now, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.